Thank you very much, Ambassador Hisham. And of course, we will encourage all the students at the American University in Cairo to submit or to work with the NISGP, the National Initiative for Smart and Green Projects. Uh, let me give you a brief on the session, how it will, the plan of the session. We will have like the four speakers. Everyone will have a 15 minutes of a speech, and then we will have a panel to talk with them, and then to contribute all the audience with a, with a, some questions to the speakers that they are on their topics. Uh, second speaker that we will have, Dr. Salah al Haggar, and he will talk about the neutral carbon emission and zero emission a business opportunity. Dr. Sarah al Haggar, he's a 30 years of experience in energy um, and sustainable development, consulting and university teaching. Dr. Sarah al Haggar has been a visiting professor at Washington State University in USA. He is presently the professor of energy and sustainable development in the American University in Cairo, and he is the president of Egypt Green Building Council. He is the president or one of the board director of the Eco Strategies for Sustainable Development, SEE. Please welcome with me Dr. Salah al Haggar. Thank you, Yasmin. And good, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Uh, today, I will talk about neutral carbon, zero carbon emission strategy. And what is the link between the two? They are related. They are related, but there are some differences between the two. The main outcome of the presentation is to develop a business opportunities and action plan for solving the global climate change problem using both neutral carbon strategy and net zero carbon strategy. The agenda, first I will give the objective of my talk, followed by what do you mean by net zero? Because everybody talks about net zero. Then what do you mean by net zero in a global scale? And then I will give or I will focus on one of them, which is neutral carbon proposed case study. And the conclusion at the end, I will give some recommendations for COP28. The objective is to present the core concept of the net zero in a global scale. And also to present the solution of climate change using neutral carbon strategy through a proposed case study. What I mean by the word proposed case study, there is some kind of cases all over the world. And what we are going to, what we are going to do here is to transfer the technology to Egypt and integrate these different <laughs> islands altogether. Now, in 2015, I authored the book, and I think it is the only book. It is the only book that talks about net zero so far. And the main objective of this book is to link between what, why we are not able to implement sustainable developments as it was planned in 1992. That is the main objective of the book. Now, the answer to that is a lack of innovation. If you don't have innovation, then forget it. You will never be able to implement the sustainable development or the su sustainable development goals. But not innovation in a generic format, innovation related to net zero. And that is the main objective documented with seven detailed innovations and 15 brief innovation within this book. And this book, by the way, it's published is AOC Press. Now, first, let me talk about what do you mean by green or net zero green strategy. Net zero green strategy, in brief, in equal out. In equal out. This is not a theoretical concept. This is a practical concept, as it was stated this, early this morning by Provost Ihab Abdurrahman, which is a major or too many cases worldwide, but one of them, it's a Kallenberg Industrial Estate located 70, 75 miles from Copenhagen. It is one of the industrial states which is net zero energy, net zero waste, net zero pollution. Now, when you say net, when I say inequal out, how about the emissions 
and waste. Just to give you an example, I can talk about this case here. I always talk about it in my graduate courses for almost about two, uh, two, two lectures, but briefly. Now, when they established this industrial estate in Kellenberg, in Copenhagen, 75 miles from Copenhagen, they said, now we have to start with a power plant. And therefore, they tried to investigate what kind of fuel we are going to use. On that time, there is two types of fuel available within the area, which is coal, but coal with high sulfur content and coal with low sulfur content. Based on the international regulation, sulfur should not exceed 0.5%. But is, is, when, when the sulfur is high, then the price is very low. And they decided to buy the cheapest coal with the lowest price and let the sulfur emissions get out of the plant, but utilize it. Because they can do what's called desulfurization by removing the sulfur, but this is very expensive. And therefore, they burned the sulfur with very high sulfur content. They emitted sulfur oxides. And then what they did, they did what's called wet scrubbing. Means they inject lime, which is very cheap, if not free, all over the world. They inject lime with the sulfur and they react together and produce gypsum. And they established the first company called Jebrock, which I'm, I'm sure some of them are here in this, in this conference. Jebrock started in Kallenberg by utilizing the sulfur contents into a gypsum and produce a gypsum boards. Now, Jebrock, they have plants all over the world. We have two plants of them here in Egypt, and they are providing 50% of the gypsum boards in Europe. That's very simple. I can talk about you know, in and out by utilizing the emission and waste. All, all waste and emission can be utilized, and all these are documented everywhere. That's what I mean by net zero green strategy. <clears throat> when you talk about net zero waste strategy, that is not new. Net zero waste strategy started almost 23 years ago. Started, and they call it on that time, gradle to gradle concept. Now, what do you mean by gradle to gradle concept? Means zero waste. This is not new, started, and implemented. People at that time, they were a little reluctant to talk about gradle to gradle. Until almost 10 years ago, they already started a certificate called Gradle to Gradle Certificate. And we have a lot of offices in Europe, in Canada, in China, they issuing a Gradle to Gradle Certificate. And that's very famous right now, and it's now you know, uh, booming a lot everywhere. <coughs> by the way, Gradle to Gradle started in three places. Started in Europe by William McDonough, started in Germany by Michael Brongard, and started here at AUC. The three all, of the, all together, we implemented greater to greater in all types of wastes. The second one is net zero water strategy. We will have one complete session about net zero wastewater or net zero wastewater strategy, or some people call it net zero water strategy. And the main idea behind this session is to demonstrate the practicality of the net zero wastewater strategy. This is a very, very important, if you remember, just in the opening remark, I said 30%, 30% of the water, of, of the wastewater generated, generated in Egypt or worldwide from the building sector. And this is very important to save our water resources. Another, another net zero is called net zero energy strategy. Net zero energy strategy, by the way, some people call it is very expensive because of the price of the, the, of the BV cells. Now, but before we talk about the renewable energy, we have to do what's called energy conservation, energy savings. And right now, worldwide, they, able, they were able to reduce the energy by 60 to 65% through, through passive energy systems, through insulating the building envelope, through high performance glass, glass windows, through uh, uh, LED, through natural lighting, etc. But one thing which is very important, because the BV cells are very expensive, and by the way, we have a lot of, a lot of buildings, net zero energy, and we have one building in the United Arab Emirates called Net Positive Energy Building by Magdal Fotim, where he provides the building with the required energy, and the, 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 the rest, they, he sells it to the municipality. 
And also we have a number of community called net zero energy community, like the famous one in London, Bedzit, where they generate energy from, from three renewable energies, from wind, bio, and solar, and they run the whole community with renewable energy. In Germany, they did an excellent initiative in 2015. They say, and instead of using this kind of expensive BV cells, how about if we can use what's called macroalgae? And they constructed this building with a macroalgae windows to absorb the solar energy and allow the natural light to get into the building. Now, when you absorb the solar energy, this will enhance macroalgae. It is, by photosynthesis, it will, it will uh, increase. And then they collect the biomass at the bottom, at the basement, and convert it into electricity, into energy. Now, the combustion of the macroalgae, mainly, mainly CO2, they take it and inject it back to the window envelope, and by this way, they enhance the growth rate of the photosynthesis because of the CO2 and because of solar energy. Uh, the, the initial results, this is very promising, but unfortunately, they did not release any of the final results. I don't know whether it's a political reason or technical reason, I have no idea. But this is the future. Now, why I say the future? Because macroalgae is the future. Macroalgae is the future. Macroalgae, people call it green gold. People call it green gold. Macroalgae it can be used as a main source of food, like a chad. A chad, one of the main dishes in a chad is spirulina. Macroalgae, where they harvest it from like a chad. And here in Egypt, we have a lot of macroalgae as a tablet from a spirulina, where we always get it from the, from the food stores. <clears throat> also can be used as a feed for fish as a feed for fish. We have here in Egypt a number of macroalgae farms. I think we have 15 uh, macroalgae ponds in Egypt, by the way. But if you try to talk about worldwide, there is thousands of macroalgae. Thousands of macro there is one farm in, in the United States, almost 1,000 acre land. Uh, also can be used as a media for treating the wastewater, whether the wastewater is municipal wastewater or industrial wastewater. And we did a lot of research here at AUC using this macroalgae, especially something called uh, cholerella vulgaris, where it, it, it gives some kind of excellent treatment for industrial waste. Also can be used for buildings, as I said before, but also can be used as a biofuel. We will have a talk about, about macroalgae as a fuel because United States, they have some kind of a plan through the Department of Energy to, to replace the fossil fuel into an alternative fuel. And therefore, therefore, they spend billions of dollars to select the high, high uh, oil content species and the technology for extracting the oil from the macroalgae. Uh, macro and I think, I think we will present this kind of results by the Department of Energy by United States, inshallah, in one of the presentations. Zero emission, I'm sure you know that from COP26, they, the initiative by United Nations is to have zero emission by 2050. Now, when you say neutral carbon emission, neutral carbon emission means, you know, the CO2 emitted, it has to be absorbed, has to be absorbed, and there will be some kind of, of neutral, neutralization or reduction of carbon emission is very urgent according to the encouragement of United Nations in COP26 in Glasgow. Now, the, the proposed idea, the proposed business plan, the proposed business plan is to integrate three different business opportunities. The first one, it's mangrove forestry. Mangrove forestry. In Egypt, fortunately, we have thousands of mangroves all over Red Sea, gray and brown. But unfortunately, it is considered as a protected area. Why is it considered as a protected area? Because this kind of mangroves, of course, it's planted in seawater with 30,000 to 40,000 PBM. And therefore, it's already available in, along the Red Sea coast. Now, the, 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 the why it's protected? Because the fish prefer to get in underneath these uh, mangroves and lay their eggs. And therefore, to save the, 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 the fish, they try to forbid, forget, forbid the uh, cutting of these mangroves. But we have worldwide mangrove forestry. I'm not talking about scattered along the, 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 uh, the Red Sea coast, etc. The second one here is to have what is called, you know, 
saline water macroalgae. Now, the fish, the fish will grow underneath the mangroves. But if you try to feed it with the, with the, with the spirulina, for example, which is uh, saline water macroalgae, then this will enhance the growth rate of the fish. And by this way, by this way, you already encourage the natural incubator underneath the mangroves and enhance the, the fish production. That's number one. Number two, with the macroalgae and the waste of the fish and the, 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 the salt water, you can take all this here and start another farm called Saliconia farm. What is Saliconia? Saliconia, it's a, it's a salt water plant. It's a salt water plant with high oil content. If you try to buy, you know, uh, Saliconia oil from all over the world before uh, Russia-Ukrainian uh, war, it was $550 uh, a ton. It's available worldwide, by the way. Now, Saliconia, it can be used as, 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 as a food, and also you can extract the oil out of Saliconia and use it as an alternative for corn oil, by the way. <clears throat> And therefore, now this mangrove forestry, it can be used first for engineering wood. We did this kind of test here at AUC where we took the stems of the mangroves and converted into engineering wood by, by some kind of process like, like crushing, grinding, and binding. And then, and then we use the animal, the, the leaves as an animal fooder, the leaves as an animal fooder. And also, also you, can, you, you can grow fish as a natural incubator. And at the end of the day, it can be considered as a carbon sequestration. Macroalgae farm, again, it can be used as a food for people, as a feed for fish, and as a biofuel, as a biofuel which is British Petroleum. Just 10 years ago, I read an article, and they are going to call British Petroleum beyond petroleum. What I mean by beyond petroleum, if the fossil fuel will finish, then they will replace it by macroalgae. And also, uh, also, it's carbon sequestration. Sariconia, sariconia, it's food, as different types of food, as you'll see in a minute, and also can be used as a biofuel. And in the same time, it can be used as a carbon sequestration. And therefore, this is, this is the, from, from a mangrove forestry. It's again, again, we have almost about 50, 60 mangrove forestry worldwide. And they, they grow this mangrove forestry mainly as a natural incubators for fish. If you try to add macroalgae to the, the water, then this will enhance the growth rate of the fish and produce the fish production, increase the fish production. This is the macroalgae farm. This is the sariconia. This is the sariconia farm, where sariconia farm can grow in salt water with 30 to 40,000 ppm, which is typical the, the salinity of the Red Sea water. And this is one of the starter uh, farm in, in China. And this is, again, the, it can be used sariconia as a main dish. Also, you can extract the oil, use it for, as an edible oil, use it as a biofuel. By the way, biofuel will have two major uh, advantages. The first advantage, it will increase the combustion performance of the engine. Second, it will improve the mechanical performance of the engine and reduce the emissions. But keep in mind, biofuel, it's a zero emission. Biofuel is zero emission because it will absorb CO2 and emit CO2. In conclusion, mangroves, it's a carbon sequestration. It's an incubator for fish and engineering wood and can be used for animal fodder. Uh, macroalgae, again, it's a carbon sequestration. It can be used as a nutrient for fish and too many other applications. Natural fish farm, natural fish farm, it's, it can grow for, can give uh, fish production. And the most important part, the waste, the waste out of this fish farm, it can be used as a nutrient for a sariconia farm, where you don't need water, you don't need any filterizers or any, by the way, uh, pesticides. And by the way, this is already applicable. applicable. The only problem is to integrate all these islands together. And the sariconia farm, it's a carbon sequestration, can produce edible oil and biofuel, and this will enhance the national economy for Egypt and for Africa. Why Africa? 
because the key issue behind this project here is the solar energy. The key issue behind this project here is the solar energy. It has the highest solar energy conversion worldwide. And therefore, this project here can contribute to the 17 sustainable development goals, can maintain the 1.5 degree C or less temperature difference, and of course, it is the road to approach uh, net zero. In conclusion, net zero concept is a solution to all pollution problems, including climate change. And keep in mind the first word, utilization and mitigations of climate change will accelerate the implementation of the 17 sustainable development goals and solve the problem of climate change. Utilization is a solution to pollution, and that is my next target, inshallah, or my next book, and the net zero cost. And as a recommendation, COP26, it's initiative. COP27, it is proposed action plan. I think COP28, it should you know, do some kind of implementation for, for net zero. Thank you.